Hi, how you doing? I'm Vince Sicantelli. I'm here with DuPont Artistry and tech, Technical Marketing. I'm Ken Hogarth. I'm here as well, Technical Marketing Specialist. Um, we're going to talk some DTT today, but just really quickly, we're set, sitting here in the DuPont Global Innovation Center where a lot of really smart people do a lot of really smart things. Uh, we're kind of gr grateful to be here with, uh, with this group, and we're going to talk some DTG over the next uh, couple of minutes. We're going to be here talking DTG, and hopefully we'll have some answers to some questions that you have about DTG. We're going to talk about a range of subjects and do a couple of demonstrations. So Vince, uh, you've been doing a lot of work here, printing some shirts. Uh, we have some colored shirts. Uh, we have white bases. We're pre-treated. We have some demonstrations on pre-treatment. We, we also have a, a white shirt here that looks great. Um, one of the questions that I get often is, do I need to pre-treat my white shirts, and what do I need to pre-treat them with? So you do not need to pre-treat your white shirts, but I would recommend it to have this vibrant color. Um, our P, P5010 is a great product that can help you along. It's non-staining. Uh, your print comes out very, very vibrant. Uh, and your wash fastness is great when using our product. Well, that's great. So Ken, um, you've been around in this industry for a, a good bit of time. Um, well, I like to think about it. <laughs> so let me ask you, how important is the quality of your shirt? You know, it's one of those things that people don't take into account as much as they actually ought to. Um, if you go on into the blank sites, there's a really wide range of, uh, of cost and quality on shirts. And the temptation is to always go to the lowest quality shirt, which is good for a lot of industries. But if you look at some of the higher quality shirts, the ring spuns, the lighter shirts, particularly short shirts that have been ring spun and combed, will end up with a very smooth, flat surface. What that allows you to do is to have a much better surface to print on. That print is going to look smoother. It's going to resist some of the fibrillation, the, the fibers that stick up off of the fabric, because they've pretty much been all taken off. And additionally, we find that on a higher quality shirt, uh, and I think most people out there probably know what they are, so we aren't going to use any names, but on the higher quality shirts, even within a certain vendor's range, you're going to be able to put down less ink to get the same image quality. So you could find if you use the cheap shirt, you're using 20-25% more ink to get good coverage and good color on that inexpensive shirt. Whereas if you spent a little bit more money on a ring spun comb shirt, you would get you would use a little bit less ink, actually probably quite a bit less ink and you'd get better image quality. And, and that's a, something I think that everybody ought to take into account as they're looking at how they're gonna structure their business uh, out there. Look at the shirts, look at what you need to do. Your rips pretty much all tell you how much ink that you're using. So go in and take a look at those things. So Ken, you hit on a couple of very good uh, points when it comes to the quality of your shirt. Uh, you also hit on you could possibly use uh, less ink and still have a very good quality. Um, will that also work with the pre-treat? Yeah, actually our recommendations are that you're going to use about six grams less, sometimes more. When you have a high quality shirt, you don't have to put down as much pre-treat for coverage there. At the end of the day, that may be, might look like a small cost, but we've worked up some models that say over a year, particularly in a high production shop, using a few grams less of pre-treat on every shirt is actually going to save you a substantial amount of money. That also reminds me of one thing. Uh, you know, we all think that cotton is cotton is cotton. And that's not necessarily true as I've been out in the market. And one of the things that uh, Vince and I recommend to people is that once you decide what you're going to use for shirts, even if you use a couple of different brands within your shop, always test on your shirts. We have shirts that we use and we try and uh, test on as many of the major brands as possible when we're developing inks, but we're not going to hit all of them. So whether you're working with DuPont or even if you're working with any of our competitors, it's really important that you understand how that system, that printer, the pre-treat, and the specific shirt, the ink, 
are all going to work together because it's not just separate things there. It's a system that you're using to make a final product. So can't stress enough that when you get your new printer in or you're adding a, a different print system, make sure you're testing in your shop, in your process, on your shirts. Uh, so with all this out here, um, you were talking about shirts and, and different manufacturers. When you go onto the websites, you see blends, tri-blends. There's a lot of choices out there. Will these systems work with blended polyester shirts? So yes, the systems will, but the inks designed also will work, work with your, uh, your poly blend shirts, your tri-blends, um, your 6040s, uh, also our P5010. It will work with uh, white polyester. Uh, the washability is great with them. Your in-use properties is great with them. So about polyester, um, tell me a little bit about your products in polyester fabric. Well, right now the P5010 pre-treatment allows us to print on 100% polyester white garments with the current P5000, P6000, and P7000 ink. So it's a really good, good product for that. As far as dark polyesters go, uh, we're always innovating. And it's got a lot of smart people in this innovation center here with us. And we've got some things that we're looking at, actually not even looking at, that we're well along with in our labs that we think will be game changing, different way of looking at pre-treatment. So stay tuned for that. So you talked about innovating and on products within the pre -treat. What about the existing products we have now and products that we have rolled out in the past year? Um, so we continue with our, our flagship products, P5000, P6000, and P7000, which are great inks for industrial applications. Supporting it supports a lot of different print heads, everything from Kyocera to Epson dimatics, we pretty much have most of the industry covered on industrial systems. One of the things that is new that has just come out are a range of, of inks for the personal promotional market. So if somebody's not industrial, they just need to print you know, 10, 20, 30 shirts a, a, a day. They don't need the flagship product. We have the EF and G series inks. The E, F, and G inks are, are aimed at that personal promotional market, and um, they're, they're value inks. They're still incredibly high quality, good color, good jetability, but they're there for the more value co conscious customers that are out there. The other thing is, we see a lot of new technology coming to the market, and we're in touch with most of the major innovators out there in the market from the printer uh, side of things. So we're constantly working with people we're coming out with new printers. I think if you were at the last ISS, you saw a couple of really exciting new printers that were running DuPont inks. We continue to make a heavy investment in print systems, in print head support, all of those types of things to make sure that every time a new innovation comes out, a new system comes out, you've got a DuPont product that can work in there very quickly that you can get from the OEM or from a distributor. So we've been talking a lot about fastness, the wash fastness on these garments, how well they're going to work in the consumer's uh, hands when they actually buy it. You're in the labs a lot. What, what type of really specific testing do you do that's science-based? So what we do is we, we stick with the ISO standards of wash fastness. We do um, light fastness testing. So with our, our pre-treat products, P5003 and P5010, we use with all of our ink sets to meet industry standards. Um, with uh, product support, what we have is our, our field, our sales. Um, so if there's ever anything where you need to be in touch with the lab, your sales will go through our, our technical marketing, which would in turn bring you back into the R&D to help with any quality issues or questions that need to be answered. That's all. So, can I, a few questions, uh, actually one of the main important questions is, how important is your file for your printing within direct, the digital printing? I, you know, there's a, a, an old, old computer term, I'm kind of an old, old computer guy, 
uh, that was big in the early days. It's called garbage in, garbage out. And it's still true today. If you get a low quality image and there's really nothing that the RIF or the system can do to make that, that easier. Uh, I've literally been at customers who downloaded tiny little GIF files and sent it to their printer and couldn't understand why it didn't look good. So file prep is huge. You're getting the right files in, making sure that they're high resolution, at least 200 DPI, 300 DPI if you can get them, very important. Um, if you're creating files yourself, that's also a place where you can, can differentiate. Um, you know, one of the things that I say to customers that I work with, uh, one of my areas of expertise is color and color management. One of the things I talk about to people a lot about is what gives you the best color spaces. If I'm creating images in CMYK space, that's a fairly compressed image space. There aren't as many colors there because it's aimed at offset presses, which are historically kind of low color quality platforms. RGB, on the other hand, which is designed for monitors, gives you a very large color space. And whenever possible, when you're making your own uh, files or customers coming to you and talking about, you know, what, how should I give stuff to you, make sure you're talking about RGB images created in our RGB. You're talking about high quality images. Anything that's nicked off the web, you know, buyer beware, there is some good stuff out there. And, you know, one other thing to think about is there are some very good uh, services out there that do have clip art that you can uh, you can subscribe to. We actually do that ourselves because um, we know that we're going to get high quality images out there. Now, if you're doing custom images, that's a little bit different. But, again, I would go back to being very clear about, you know, want as much color and as high resolution as possible because that's going to give you this type of image quality when you're printing your product. And again, at the end of the day, you want to print something that's really bright and shiny and that consumers are going to want to really uh, gravitate toward.